Hello my lovelies and welcome to the last day of our sew along. Today is day five and we'll be finishing the bottom that we left yesterday. Remember we haven't sewn the side seams because we we'll are first attached them to the waistband and then sewing the side seams. So we'll be finishing that and we'll be adding the hardware, hemming and all that good stuff, putting the final finishing touches on our overalls. So let's get to it. Take your back piece, which in my case is a skirt, in your case could be pants, so you should have the back piece at this point. Your back piece should be made out of the two uh, mirror images that have the crotch seam sewn and that's it with or without the pockets so lay it right side up take your uh, back bib and place it right sides together in my case it's the same uh, print so I, I know which one I want to feature on the front and match the center Find and mark if you haven't done it when you cut the pattern like I have of the center uh, of the skirt. If you have if you've done the pants, then the center will be that crotch seam. And the center of the raw edge of the bib. And you're going to pin this in place along the raw edges. <clears throat> this is a one-to-one -one ratio, so there shouldn't be any stretching. And you'll be working with three layers of fabric. In my case, three layers of rather thick um, French terry. So I'm definitely using my sewing machine for this. You know I'm a huge fan of serger. I'll use it whenever I can. But sometimes it just looks better and neater and more put together and sturdier if sewn on a sewing machine. And I will sew this with a triple stretch stitch. I haven't cut these uh, serger tails off, so it's okay if they come out a little bit, I'll remove them afterwards. It's totally normal. Okay, so let's do a triple stretch. And let me do for length 3.8 tension. And this will be sewn with a half an inch seam allowance. want to surge afterwards, you can. I don't think that I will. We will be repeating the same steps, so this is the back, how it looks on the back. Let me just remove these tails here. Okay, and we'll do the same thing, but now with the front, so set the back aside. 
grab the front of your pants or your skirt in my case the skirt lay it right side up I have my center notch already marked from when I cut my fabric find the center of your waistband and match it with that notch again right sides together and pin in place there will be places when you where you have the pockets when you have four layers of fabric so be very cautious and wary if you're using your serger for this step again strongly recommend using your sewing machine and this is one to one ratio so you can see it better this is one to one ratio so there shouldn't be any stretching Okay, waistband ends where that fabric ends. Okay, so this is how it's pinned together. Okay, and let's stitch with a half an inch seam allowance using a triple stretch stitch. Just like we did for the back. Go slowly where the pockets are because you're changing from three layers to four so give your machine a chance to adjust to the new thickness What I recommend you do right now, if you want to top stitch, I wouldn't recommend flipping it and top stitching all the layers because there will be excess bulk. Separate your seam allowances and trim the seam allowance uh, that has the pocket and the um, here. So I'm separating this. So trim the layers that are attached to the waistband. Leave just the layer that's the skirt and then top stitch up. This way you have minimal bulkiness here. If you top stitch now you have so many layers and you don't want that to, to add extra bulk. So trim away this part of the seam allowance and then top stitch. Let me see if I can find it. I don't know if my scissors will work on so many layers of French terry. If not, I'll grab a different. So I show you what I mean. And this will definitely reduce a lot of the bulk. In the waistband. So you're reducing two layers of, uh, of the waistband.
and you can definitely run this through your cover stitch machine for the top stitching which is probably what I'll do so I'm removing about a quarter of an inch okay so here's a close-up what I did see right here I remove the quarter of an inch this way when I go and flip up and top stitch up there is a lot less bulk here so I'll go ahead and do that on my cover stitch right here see I top stitched up and this is what it looks like from the back how pretty is that thread so your front and the back are done. Now you want to take them and place them right sides together. And this is when you'll, you'll be sewing the side seam that we didn't sew yesterday. Again, I usually like to use my serger for this, but because I have that waistband over there, I'm going to start my stitching with the sewing machine this time around. And then maybe move to my serger, although where the pockets are I have a pretty thick layer. So I might just stay with the sewing machine on this one because I've used French terry and it's thick. So this is what it looks like when pinned together. I'm thinking maybe I should top stitch We'll see. So the sides seem pinned together and this is what it looks like on this part. Alright, let's go ahead and stitch. Again, you'll need to be very slow there. Because you're going through a lot of layers. it afterwards but you want to start this with your sewing machine This is what it looks like stitched. Okay, so let's do the same thing but on the other side. maybe a close-up from this angle so what you want to do is place these right sides together like so here and put a pin and then pin all the way down that's easy but here is where I wanted to show you how it looks like 
Okay. Here. This is the part that you need, definitely need to stitch with your sewing machine to make sure that everything is aligned. Then you can definitely continue this part with your serger. Let me go ahead and do this one with the searcher. sewing machine, nothing will be moving from here. My plate said no ma'am, no ma'am. I need to uh, change my plate. For sure. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch the other side with the serger. I'm going to go press my seams. Very important, don't skip pressing your seams because again, the waviness that you see here will be on your body too and you don't want that. You want to press your seams and then I'm going to do a memory hem which means I'm going to press the bottom of my skirt half an inch or you can do one inch if you want a shorter skirt if you're doing pants before you get to this step you need to sew the inseam of the pants that will put the pants together so now you've attached the side seams yesterday you've done the crotch seams but you also have to sew the inseam and make sure that you match uh, the crotch seams when you sew the inseam of the pants easy and then do the same thing. You'll be folding just like I'm doing for the skirt. So I'll meet you back here in a second and we're going to hem on um, the cover stitch. All right, my friends, I went ahead and top, um, pressed the hem half an inch like so, created a memory hem. So I'm going to run this hem through my serger. If you want your shirt, your shirt, your skirt to be uh, shorter, you can definitely hem a whole inch. Having a memory hem will definitely make a huge difference when you stitch. Because you just stays there and This unicorn main thread is outstanding with the red and the colors in this print. So pretty. This is hem. There's one more top stitching I would like to do, and I'll show you. I'll do that on the cover stitch. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. I 
I love it. Okay, so the last top stitch that I would like to do is on the back bib. Because remember we've top stitched the front but we didn't top stitch the back. So I'll do that now. So where where your back bib meets the skirt here, see this part, I don't want it like this. I want to finish it nicely. So I'm going to fold and top stitch down. So this is the bib, I'm top stitching down from just on the back portion. it encloses the raw edge and it's not flipping like this. I, when I was pressing it, I noticed how it was rolling and I didn't like that. So definitely top stitching it. And it will solve that issue. And if you want, you can also remove excess bone like we did for the front. And we are done sewing. The last uh, thing we need to do is add, add the hardware to the straps. And that is done without... Uh, it actually does involve a little bit of sewing, but just a little bit. Of course, if you're adding buttonholes, you'll do that on your sewing machine. So this is how it looks like now. This is my notch. Let me remove my notch because I don't need that anymore. Much better, right? Than the part that was wavy. And plus, one more place where I have unicorn main thread. So, love it. Okay, give it a good press. And let's go to the table to add our uh, hardware. Let's add the buckles and this is the last step for today and for the sew along. So if you don't, don't have the markings you've made for using the pattern piece right now, it's easy to mark your, your button for the buckles simply by measuring one inch from the top and then one inch from uh, the side. So this is where one of my buttons will go. Marked it there, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So, here, and I'm measuring one inch, so it's right here, right about here. Okay, so markings are done here and here. When you open your package of uh, buckles, you should have two of the hooks part, two sliders and two buttons and two what looks like screws because they have indentations but they're not screws, they're actually uh, like nails, you're gonna hammer those in. So for this part, which is the part with the bib, you will be using these four pieces. So easy go ahead and put a tiny little hole where your markings are just to put the screw through it not big just to help the screw go through and you want the screw flat head to be on the lining so 
this is the lining and this is your screws flat head and it's pointy out here and then you want to take your uh, button part and you want to put that right on top and this will be hammered in as good as you can get it so this is how it looks like from the side let's go ahead and I'll put a little piece of fabric here so right now I have the button side down on my table on that fabric and then I have my screw right here and I'm trying to hammer it in as straight as I possibly can I'm working on a weird angle so it, you can see it on camera but if you can push it in at least a little bit to give it some stability and then hammer it in see I don't want it to move pretty flat so this it's supposed to be uh, 3d it's not going to be flat with your overalls if you want to try from the top to make sure you protect your button okay looks pretty good as long as the whole post of the button the screw well the nail goes inside then you're all set and it is this is what it looks like this is supposed to be wiggly like this and this is from the back so let's do the same thing but on the other side take your screw nail nail that looks like a screw Push it through. I don't want to make holes too big. But I also want the screw to go on the other side. There you go. So this is flat. On, the flat part is on the back. Then the pointy part is on the front of the bib and make sure the whole thing shows there okay, so now you take your button and you place it on top <coughs> And you hammer it down from from the back. Oops! Don't hammer it down your um, camera. And try from the front too. I don't like the uh, hammering from the front because I don't want to ruin my my button. But I feel like it works better from the front than from the back. It's straighter and goes quicker from the front. want to make sure that this is flat and it it caught the fabric see right here this piece here see this one I want to make sure that it's flat and it is this is supposed to be wiggly that's fine okay so the front is done now we're going to take the straps and add this part to them 
Now that the buttons are placed, let's go ahead and add the adjustable strap. So for that, we'll be using the um, slider as well as the buckle part. Let's start with the slider. Take your slider and hold it like this. Okay. This is an adjustable slider that came with it. And I'm going to take one piece of the strap and pull it up and then I'm going to take another the other the same side of the strap and pull it down so right now if you look from the side you have this loop okay and the adjustable slider is right in here okay now take your um, clasp part and go through this side, so the uh, right after the first bar, and then pull on the other side, like this. So right now from the side, it looks something like this. This is the slider and this is the uh, buckle part. Okay, I'm going to go as much as I can on this side. Keep in mind that I'm using French Terry. So it's pretty thick. If you're using cotton lycra, it's not going to be as thick. It will run a little smoother through this. Okay, so this part is done. Now you take your end and you go back on the slider on the inside, like right here. And this is where it gets tricky because it's a little thick, my fabric, but not impossible. So again up on the left side you see here and now I'm going down on the right side the same way I did before if you find that it's too thick like in my case you might want to push it with a little tool and then pull okay so again, from this side, this is what it looks like. This is your slider, your buckle. This is your slider. And now, all you have to do is stitch this down. And that you can do simply with your sewing machine. So this here, you're going to stitch it down. Let me put two pins. And then I'll show you the other, I'll go over the other strap this one more time so you can see it. Okay, I'll leave this on this side. So let's take the other strap. And remember, the, the top goes through the slider up one time, down on the other side of the bar. The, the, loose bar here in the center okay so it went down this end right now goes in the top of the buckle down through the center of the buckle and this is it that's the buckle is done so the same end goes again on the slider, it goes up through the center, here, okay, I'm, I'm showing you from the side because I think it's easier to understand, and then it goes down, okay, buckle is out of the way, we don't need the buckle anymore, it goes down on the bar on the other side. So I'm moving the bar here, I'm pushing this in, because now there's a lot of layers in this adjustable slider. So it just needs a little help to push it down here. Just because I have French terry and it's pretty thick, you won't have this issue with cotton like. Okay, so I'm pulling it down. There you go. 
So once again, this is what it looks like from the side. Okay, so from the side, and this will be stitched to this. This will stitch together. And let me take a clip, borrow a clip from the other one. About one inch. Okay, so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and stitch this down. I stitched this down right here okay so now you have an adjustable strap that looks really professional really nice and of course you will add it adjust it to your own measurements when you try on your overall just want to show you how it looks like buckle there you go See how pretty? Alright my friends, this is it. That was the last step for today. Give it a good press. Take a picture of your completed project and post it in the day 5 photo of the Sew Along album. We'll have a couple of uh, catch up days if you're not uh, up to date with the Sew Along. And on the 29th after 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'll be drawing the winner of the Sew Along from the entries posted in the day five photo comments so i will see you in the backstitch back room and i will see you here on my channel for our next video thank you for joining me and hope you have a wonderful day bye